Hi everybody, it's Miss Billingsley again. Today we are going to talk about something that's necessary in order for us to move forward, and that is the different types of quadratic equations. Now you may not realize that there are actually multiple types of different quadratic equations. So one we have seen before, and that's vertex form. The others are brand new, and today we're gonna focus on which key features each of them shows. Okay, so we're gonna look at what we can identify given each of these different types of quadratic equations. So uh, first let's start with something that's familiar and that is vertex form. So vertex form, let's write the general form right here. So f of x equals a times x minus h squared. Oops, let's move this out of the way. Okay, and then on the end we add k. So what we know about vertex form is obviously that it gives us the vertex. So one of the key features is the vertex. Remember that the vertex comes from the point hk. That is the coordinate point hk. So that's given to us here and here. On this example, so let's actually pause here and graph this on our paper. If you don't have a graph paper, you can open up Desmos and type this in so that we can get a good look at the graph here. Okay, so now that I've graphed this, where is that vertex? It's gonna be at HK, and notice that here H is actually positive two. Don't let that negative trick you remember, it always flips the sign. So at positive two on the X, also positive two on the Y. So my vertex is gonna be here at two, two. That's HK. Okay, what else does this tell me? Right, the other thing here is the A value, and the A value tells me the width of my graph. It also tells me um, whether it opens up or down. In addition to that, it tells me whether I have a minimum or a maximum. So vertex form actually gives us a lot of useful information and I can actually create the whole graph based on a vertex form. Now I know that my stretch factor is two, so I'm going to stretch it down by two. Typically we would go over one, down one. Remember the pattern is three, one, one, three. But now we're multiplying that by negative two. So here I'm going down two over one and then I'm gonna go down at six over one to get to my next two points. So here we have a little sketch of our parabola. Notice that because A is negative, it's opening upside down, as well as it being two, that's what makes it skinny. That's what gives it that stretch factor. Okay, so a lot of good stuff given to us here. We know the vertex, we know the width, we know if it opens up or down, as well as the minimum and the maximum, and all of this comes from that A value. Okay, so we've already known all of this, now we're just coming up with a list so that we can easily differentiate between which form that we want. Okay, next we're gonna take a look at a new form that we've never seen before. You might've heard of it, but a uh, standard form. Okay, and again, let's go ahead and write that general form here, f of x equals, I know I'm gonna have to move these guys, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, our standard form has a times x squared. That's what gives it that uh, parabola shape. And then we add on bx, and then lastly, we add on a c. So this is a trinomial, and a, b, and c, uh, some of those letters have meaning. One that we know is the a value. We, again, use the same key features when we're given this a value. So a also tells us the width, uh, it tells us if it opens up or down. and it tells me if I have a minimum or a maximum. Okay, so the same meaning for the A value here. Something that's new though is this C value. One thing that this tells us that the previous one doesn't is the Y-intercept. Okay, the Y-intercept, sometimes we call this the initial value or like the starting point. Okay, and this comes from that C value. So this came from A, the y-intercept comes from the c-value. So if we look over here at our example, my c-value is negative six, okay? Over here we add c, so over here it's adding a negative c or a negative six. So what that means is that my y-intercept 
is going to be at the point zero, negative six. So if I look at an x, y axis, let's draw a little sketch over here. I know that down here at negative six, I'll have a dot that lays somewhere on my parabola. Another thing I know about this particular example is that it opens down and it's gonna be skinny like the previous example. But unfortunately, I don't know where that vertex is. So here's just some sketches that we could do. Maybe that is my vertex, right? We don't know. So it could be like that. It also could be, you know, in the middle of the parabola. The vertex could be over here. Or it could even be over here. Okay, we just know that somewhere on the parabola, it has a y-intercept of negative 6. So this one's not really useful for us if we need the vertex. That is obviously what vertex form is for, but this one does tell us y-intercept. So if we need to know that, we would want it to be in standard form. Lastly, we're going to look at factored form. Okay, factored form all obviously has its own benefits, um, and we're going to learn how to factor later. We're going to actually learn how to turn functions into this form, but it's good to know what it does for us first. So first, let's write the general form. f of x equals a. Look at that a again. You guessed it. It's the exact same meaning as before. And then we're going to multiply that by x minus, uh, let's do p first, x minus p times x minus q. Okay, notice here that we have two binomials multiplied by each other and then multiplied by a. So over here on our key features list, we know the same thing that a always tells us. The width opens up or down. as well as if it's a max or a min. Okay, here we have two binomials. Each of these binomials tells us something special, and what it tells us are the zeros of this parabola. Zeros are interchangeably called x-intercepts, also solutions. This is the key feature that has lots of different names, so let's write a few of them. Most commonly called zeros but also known as x-intercepts. And this comes from P and Q. So P and Q actually are the zeros of this parabola. So if we look over here at our example, notice that P here is one, Q here is three. That means that I have zeros at x equals one and x equals three, okay? And if we were to sketch a little graph, those numbers would be over here at one and at three, okay? Typically, our zeros are uh, right down the middle or symmetric about the vertex. So our vertex here, we know that this one opens upside down because my A value is negative two, meaning my vertex is gonna be somewhere up top and then the parabola will go through those zeros, something like this. So again, it's not a perfect uh, sketch of this graph, but we do now know the x-intercepts. We don't know the vertex, okay? We're just kind of guessing where that vertex is. So each of these has their own useful information. We use them for all different types of ways. We even convert from one form to another based on what we need. If I need to know the zeros, then I'll convert it to factored form. If I need to know the vertex, then I'll change it to vertex form. So that's what's going to be coming up. Uh, but first, let's make sure we have this list of each of these key features so you can easily uh, tell which one that you're going to need to use. Okay, that is all for today. If you have any questions, shoot us an email. Thanks a ton for watching.